Well, good morning. Welcome back to Croydon College. Uh, it's actually the afternoon now, isn't it? It's just gone midday. So uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's great that you're able to join us this afternoon uh, here at Croydon College, where we're talking to you all day about the role of an apprentice and what you can learn and study at the college uh, and the team that are here to support you. And we're doing this as part of the National Apprenticeship Fair. So whether you're watching now because you're, you've gone along to the virtual fair or whether you're just logging in either now live or watching this later, welcome and we hope that over the next few minutes we'll be able to share with you uh, the process to become an apprentice at the college uh, and with me today I've got two members of the team um, I've got Gail with me who looks after the apprenticeships within the college and Lishanda who looks after the admissions process so hi welcome Gail uh, welcome Lishanda and um, yeah, just, just coming to you first obviously we're in a unprecedented times um, and for many people not just young people these days people of all ages apprenticeships are a very important route for people aren't they and particularly in this session we're talking about digital and IT uh, and I would imagine that that's something which at the moment is at the top of a lot of people's agendas because the pandemic has made us all go virtual so we're all doing this a lot more. Have you seen much more interest in this in this um, subject over the last recent months? Yes um, especially actually with schools they're looking at employing digital apprentices um, mm -hmm. we're getting more interest from IT companies looking to train up people because obviously they've needed a lot more staff um, so yeah all, all around there's been quite a lot more interest and we're getting a lot more companies asking for apprentices in the IT world. And I think that's key, isn't it, to anyone that's thinking about doing an apprentice. It's not just about the education establishment that can help them with the apprenticeship course. It's about that connection with the business world and, and the companies that will be offering these vacancies, because that's a really key part of that, isn't it? And I think you know, it's fair to say at Croydon, we have a huge amount of companies that are engaging with us that are wanting these types of apprenticeships. So you know, really the message this morning to anyone who's thinking about apprenticeships and thinking about who their provider might be, one of the important things is to look at what that databases if you like a business and I know over many many years Croydon uh, being one of the largest apprenticeship providers in the southeast has an amazing list of businesses doesn't it that it works with yes we have we have a, a list of a client base especially ones that keep coming back to us year after year um, yep. so we have sort of built up really good links with, with uh, local employers um, yep. And it has been changing because IT wasn't always the focus of Croydon College, but the last few years, um, IT is becoming more and more popular and the yeah. career development so good within IT. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, if you are watching us live, please do talk to us. Um, you can do that by using the Q&A button or you can just chat to us using the chat function. If you've got a particular question, either about this subject or any topic of apprenticeships, do feel free to pop that um, into the uh, into the session. We are running sessions every hour throughout today. Um, we had one earlier on construction and engineering. This one is about digital and IT. Uh, and then a bit later on, uh, we're moving into professional services um, at one o'clock, business and finance, finance at one o'clock. But for now, I'm going to hand over to you, Gail. I'm going to share the slide presentation and you're going to talk us through a little bit about what's needed in terms of digital and IT. So over to you. Welcome to Croydon College. We're looking at, at the session with um, regarding digital and IT. Okay, next slide, please. Right, the overview. So um, apprenticeships are a form of education, but they are a different form of education. Um, they are industry recognised and quite often within your apprenticeship, you have to take industry recognised exams, especially within IT. Um, the pathway for future development career opportunities is really good. Um, you can start off on a level three um, IT and then um, go on to level four. You can eventually have a level seven um, in IT and which is a, a a fully qualified, you know, fully full degree, really. But with an apprenticeship, you will normally work um, 30 to 40 hours per week. Um, so usually it's up nine to five um, or nine to half five, um, four days with a day off for your off the job training. Now, this could be either coming into college um, for half day or a whole day, or if it's half a day, then you will be expected to be learning in the workplace as well. Um, three areas, three key areas that apprenticeships are now made up of are skills, knowledge and behaviour. The skills you're usually shown within your workplace, so it's a how to do things and it's the hands on stuff that you need to learn. The knowledge we, we cover at college um, through um, having an assessor, so they'll give you assignments, written assignments, you have to um, 
you have to complete some online exams. Um, behavior, hopefully most of the behaviors you will have, but you will be um, enhancing them. So things like making sure that you turn up on late, uh, turn up on time and then you're not late. Um, you're making sure that you dress appropriately, um, showing respect and dignity to colleagues, that sort of thing. Right, next slide, please. Right, you can progress on to higher level qualifications. As I said previously, we do go right up to a level seven, which is a degree. So you can effectively get a degree without paying any money whatsoever or having it to get a loan out or anything. Um, and so you can do it all in an apprenticeship. Um, and as again, as I said, within um, some of the um, qualifications, you do get recognised um, status from your sector. For example, in HR, you would get a CIPD recognition. Um, and within, um, say, pensions, you become a member of the PMI, things like that. So from levels two to level seven, level two is really GCSE um, standard and a degree is a level seven. Um, apprenticeships, they, they now have an endpoint assessment, so very similar to taking a GCSE GCSE on A level, you have the exams or you have an assessment at the end. It's not necessarily an exam. It's more um, practically based. So you would not have a discussion um, on a portfolio you've produced, or you might have to do an observation within the workplace, um, or you have to do a project and present your project. And then you will be graded, and the grades are fail, pass, merit, and distinction. And of course, at Croydon, we aim for distinction. Right, next slide, please. Right, apprenticeship de delivery. Um, in order to complete your apprenticeship, we will you will need to learn um, and you will have things like classroom-based sessions. So they could be, for example, the level five of um, departmental operations. It might be just every other week. So um, the assessor will go through your assignment with you and then um, expect you to then go and do research and set yourself up a time, um, time scale for your, not time scale, some, you have to organise your own time in where you're learning and hope your employer should be giving you time as well. Um, online teaching portfolio building, because of COVID, we, some of our teaching has gone online and we do one-to-one -one Zoom sessions or um, small groups in, in Zoom sessions or Teams. Um, our assessors are industry-based. For example, our accountancy um, tutor has been an accountant in his past, life. well, still is an accountant, um, and our HR um, assessor has an HR background. So we're all from industry backgrounds. Um, and obviously we support your role with your employers. So we do have regular meeting and regular contact with the employers. And we find this really important and necessary throughout the apprenticeship. Exam preparation and support. So when you're reaching your endpoint assessment, we will just we won't just throw you in and say, all right, it's next week. We will give you lots of preparation. So we'll have practice discussions with you, and we will expect your employer to have a practice discussion with you. We will also give you mock tests, for example, if some of the um, qualifications have to have multiple choice tests, and we will give you mock tests of those. And obviously, if you have to do a presentation, we will get you to practice and practice and practice your presentation. We do visit your workplace on a regular basis, not so much at the moment, but hopefully that will all change soon. Um, and then we come to your workplace, do, prep, well, do observations with you so you get used to doing observations in your workplace and that you're familiar um, with how observations work. And of course, we offer lots of individual support and guidance. Um, assessors are there to make sure that you pass your apprenticeship and we give every support and, and guidance and help that we can. And um, we also are very lucky at the moment to have two um, additional learning support practitioners so that can proofread your work. So if you are not confident with how you've written things, you can email them to our ALS um, practitioners and they will go through it and they will check the spelling, they will check how the grammar is, how the tone of it is and um, give you feedback. Um, and of course, if you have any special needs, um, they, they will accommodate those as well. Okay, next slide, please. Right, at the moment, these are the qualifications we are um, offering. So digital marketer. Um, so it's an 18 month course and it's a level three. Um, an infrastructure technician. And again, this is a, um, we have a young lad who works at school who's doing this qualification um, and he's nearly finished. So that's good. Um, and it's again, it's a level three and a 12 months. So it can be done. It's quite um, 
quite a short apprentice really in apprenticeship terms and junior content producer um, so this is for someone who's looking at writing content for um blogs um or for any sort of um it media um, and again, the assessor from that area, it works, has has a background in that area and has actually done things with the BBC and various television organisations. Right, next slide, please. Right, so why do an apprenticeship? An apprenticeship to me is an absolute fantastic way of learning, getting a skill, getting a qualification and you earn money. It's not always fantastic salary when you begin but it will go up once you have your qualification so you will get a qualification within the within working you will look, you will gain your independence and respect um, you benefit from ongoing and personalized support from your tutor and hopefully you will get a mentor in your workplace you gain real work experience. So you're working in a real environment, doing real tasks and expected to produce those tasks and um, as any other employee would. Um, so you are taught how to do those tasks, how to um, send emails, say, how to word things. So you will get all the experience to, to, you know, to complete your apprenticeship. It will prove your employability. So quite a lot of um, companies now not only want experience, they do want to see that person has that qualification. And so you, with an apprenticeship, you do gain both. You get the qualification and you get the work experience. So it's a win-win for everyone. Right, develop your skills. So as you um, get more into apprenticeship, you will learn other skills. Your employer will, as soon as they trust you to do one thing, they will get you to do another thing and another thing. And so by the end of your apprenticeship, you will be as a, as every other employee in that company you will be you know have really good skills um, and obviously if you want to stay with your employer and um, you can and but you can always take those skills elsewhere as to discover your earning potential so once you finish your apprenticeship you can obviously go on and earn more money so that's really good thank you right. Thanks, Gail. So, um, you know, a few things just to reiterate for, for those that are watching you either live or uh, at another time. I mean, clearly, uh, this is for any level of skill. Um, yeah. I think the point you made about you can get a degree without paying university fees yeah. by, by working either up through the programme um, or just coming in at that degree level, um, uh, level seven, um, and doing an apprenticeship at degree level. Uh, and at the same time, get real hands on experience of, of working. Um, yeah. Um, in the work environment, which we know is, is you know, really important skills to have. Uh, it's not just important to be academic. You need to be able to actually work in, uh, in the actual work environment too. And just to pick up on that um, point that you made about that additional support that Croydon College offers, because I know this is a really big part of, uh, you know, the whole feel of, of Croydon College, the support that they give their students. Uh, and I was really interested to hear what you said, because, again, traditionally apprenticeships are considered to be more sort of hands-on um, uh, roles rather than ac academic roles and not everybody that is thinking of doing that type of a role is going to be the best at you know the literary skills that you mentioned but indeed they do need to still do some assessments and pass exams so just to reiterate what you said then that there is a, an additional support yeah. that anyone coming to Croydon can use for that to help them get through that ac academic part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the ALS practitioners will help anyone with sort of dyspraxia or dyslexia, and we can put support and, and measures into place to help them. Um, and quite often the support workers are in the classroom as well, so they're there all the time giving 100% support. And the other thing just to mention um, is, is the fact that obviously the government currently is offering a very good incentive to employees um, to take on additional apprenticeships to try and help uh, with, you know, the growing unemployment that's happening because of the pandemic. And so now's a really good time, isn't it, to apply uh, because there's a, a raised and heightened interest from employees who are looking for apprenticeships at all levels. Would that would that be true? Yes. And also to upskill um uh, employers em, employees as well so it's not just to take on new people which I think is really good with the government incentive but also upskill as well so people were you know if they're leaving or not being well or left for other reasons to upskill your staff as well so that's you know and also a great great way to ensure that you keep hold of your staff by yeah. giving them additional training yeah, rather than absolutely. thinking that they need to go elsewhere and currently in the current climate we're in you know yeah. job hopping is never going to be that easy so actually yeah. if you can gain extra skills in your current role um that's yeah. probably a more secure yeah. place to be um, yeah research has shown that um if you 
if you um, motivate your learner by, if you motivate your employer by giving them sort of skills to, you know, you you hold on to them, the retention rate, but much better if you invest in your employer. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. A couple of things there I think that not everyone realises about apprenticeships. They've moved on a lot, haven't they, um, in recent work years. So thanks very much for that, Gail. Gail, perhaps you just pop your um, contact details in the um, in the chat um, just for anybody that might want to make contact. Um, I'm going to come over now to Lashanda. Uh, Lashanda, you started your life at Croydon College, I believe, as an apprentice. <laughs> Uh, so you're practicing what you pe- preach because now you've moved up through that apprenticeship program um, and you're now part of the, the full time employed t- team and you look after the admissions process, don't you, for, for apprenticeships? Yes. Great. So uh, we're going to carry on with the slide presentation and you're going to tell us a little bit about what people should do if they're interested in applying. OK, so I'm just going to talk through how to go through the application process with Croydon College when it comes to applying for an apprenticeship. So to apply for any of our apprenticeship job vacancies, you have to apply either through the Croydon College website, the apprenticeship um, national apprenticeship website, or you could go through our apprenticeship job vacancy list. Um, just ensure that when you do send in your application that you respond to every question in as much detail as possible. And if you can, please send an updated version of your CV. What we do advise is if you don't really have a lot of relevant experience in that particular field, it would be a really good idea just to write a cover letter just explaining why you're really interested in that apprenticeship role and just prove to employers that you, one, meet the eligibility criteria that they're looking for, and two, that you're actually really looking forward to being committed to that apprenticeship role. So as part of the application for process, first- Mr. Shanda, can I just interrupt you for a minute? Because uh, you're obviously in a very busy office, so there's lots going on and there's quite a lot of background noise. So I wonder whether you could just ask your colleagues to just move away slightly um, from, where you're, from where you're talking, because it's quite hard to pick up what you're saying. Okay. Is it okay if I just mute for two seconds? Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, no, not a problem. I think it's important that we um, that we get this right because getting the application process right um, is is really important. So yeah, no, that's fine. Um, do you want to carry on and see how we get on? Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to talk through the application process for the apprenticeships. Mm-hmm. So once you sent in an application for any of our apprenticeship job vacancies that you're interested in. Your application would then be reviewed and shortlisted before you be contacted for a phone interview just to ensure that you meet the eligibility criteria for the apprenticeship job that you're going for. Once you are invited to the college for an initial assessment, and we are conducting online initial assessments as well, um, the initial assessment is just to ensure that one, you have the right documents to enroll onto the apprenticeship course, and two, that you need to definitely meet the eligibility criteria for that apprenticeship job. Um, after, during that initial assessment, you'll also go through a math and English assessment if, for instance, you don't have your math and English GCSEs. Um, after the initial assessment, you'll send your CV and cover letter over to the employer. The employer will have to let us know whether or not they'd like to interview you. Once they've confirmed that, we would go through all of the arrangements for that interview. You attend that interview and it'll be the employer's final decision of whether or not they'd like to hire you as an apprentice. Um, once you get gotten through the interview stage, if you would like to go through mock interviews, we do support with that as well. Um, if you require any information, advice, and guidance during the interview process, we can help with that as well. And we do try to get as much feedback as possible from the interview as well. Um, so these are just some useful tips whenever you decide to apply for any apprenticeships. Just ensure that you attach an updated version of your CV when applying. And please, if you can, please write a cover letter to support your application. If you require any additional support with your cover letter, we could help with that as well when we get through the initial assessment stage. And if selected for an interview, we will assist with interview preparation. So we have quite a few live apprenticeship job vacancies on the Croydon College website that are advertised right all with names, I should be the school called Co. And we also have another digital marketing apprenticeship with Go To Games. The thing with our apprenticeship job vacancies is that we um, 
we update this out of the website every Monday. So if you want to have a look on the apprenticeship job vacancy website, if there's anything that's not advertised now, there may be something else that may be advertised next week or the following week that you may be more interested in. Thank you, Lashanda. Well, there's some contact details there. And I think the other thing to say is that if you drop us your contact details in the chat, we'll add you to the database, which means that I think every week you do send out the, the latest vacancies uh, to our database. So if you are thinking ab about doing an apprentice, um, then obviously uh, we'll make sure we can add you to that database. Just to say that those live vacancies are really, really live vacancies. So there are jobs out there now for people. There are companies out there that are wanting to take on apprentices. So if you're interested in learning more about digital and IT, um, both whether it be at that Woodcote School Opportunity or go to Games. Go to Games is actually an amazing uh, entrepreneur business that started in Croydon. Um, and, uh, and is really doing some great stuff in the games market, which is obviously uh, really, really important at the moment. So um, hopefully uh, the last 15 minutes or so has given you the information that you need to consider whether you want to make an application uh, to be an apprentice at Croydon College. What I would urge you to do is to go to the website, croydon.ac.uk, um, and go to the application centre and start by just filling in that application. Or if you have more questions, you can chat to us on the live chat box, or indeed you can uh, contact any of my colleagues here and we'll give you more information. I hope this has been, has been helpful. Uh, we are back again at one o'clock uh, when we're talking about business and finance apprenticeships. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks very much and goodbye.